Hello, in this video, I'm going to explain how to read a topographic map. Uh, first off, the content and language objectives. The content objective is I can interpret information from a topographic map. A language objective is I can write observations about a location based upon a topographic map. Uh, so first off, what is a topographic or topo map? Uh, it is a map that shows the elevation of different areas using lines that represent specific altitudes. So looking at the picture to the right, you can see a mountainous area. And those different lines, they represent changes of elevation, uh, whether you go up some peak or down into some valley. Uh, why use a topographic map? Uh, they're used by hikers planning different excursions up into the mountain ranges, uh, engineers when building different sites, and then geologists to learn about the history of a given area. So the picture to the right just shows an engineer's map of a particular area before some construction might begin, for example. Uh, reading the topographic map. So each line of a top, uh, topo map represents a certain height. Uh, you wouldn't have to travel up or down in elevation if you walked upon a single line. Uh, so you see towards the bottom left of the map, there's a line that says 600. If you walked upon this line, you would stay at an altitude of 600 feet along the entire map. Uh, everywhere that it's listed at 600. On maps, uh, lines are only labeled in increments of 50 or 100 for the most part. And so again, looking at the bottom left of the map, you see a line that says 600, and then a line, and another line, a third line, a fourth line, and then it says 650. Uh, so each bold line represents a 50-foot increment, and then each uh, unlabeled line represents a 10-foot increment. Steepness and peaks. So the closer lines are on a topo map, the steeper the slope. Uh, and the further apart they are, the less steep a slope, the shallower slope. Uh, peaks are sometimes identified with a specific height. And so if you are looking at this particular map uh, towards the center, uh, I guess, upper portion of this map, you see many lines that are close together. Uh, this is a kind of rapid change in elevation. Uh, if you were to look at the top left of the map, you notice there are hardly any lines at all here. Uh, that would mean that this is uh, virtually flat during this portion of the map. Uh, rivers and oceans. So if you follow a river, uh, what you'll notice is they point uphill. Again, uh, looking at the stream, the river, the tributary, whatever it is that we've got uh, where my mouse is hovering over now, uh, you notice that towards the top, the elevation is 650. Uh, you notice towards the middle here, the elevation is 600. Uh, and it seems as though as you point uh, up here, the elevation increases. Uh, it says at the bottom, the oceans are by definition at zero feet. So anytime you see an ocean on a to uh, topographic map, excuse me, uh, they are at zero feet, they're at sea level. Uh, so just a little topographic map practice. Uh, there are a bunch of questions here that we'll go through and just get some answers to, uh, to give you an idea of how these work. It says, what is the elevation of Mauna Kea? And so if you look at the map here, uh, it's shown towards the top of the map where the red arrow is pointed. Uh, you can see lines that say 7,000 and then a blank and then 9,000. Uh, and so you can see that uh, 9, 10, this is about 11,000 feet. Uh, second question here, what is the name of the tallest peak of this Hawaiian island? Uh, if you look at where the arrow is pointed at now near letter F, uh, Mauna Loa, uh, you can see that uh, the rapid rise of uh, elevation here, uh, the la last line that's shown, uh, I guess, above Mauna Loa, where it's mentioned here, is 11,000 feet. And you can see that there are two more lines. So this would be about 13,000 feet. Uh, where is the flattest area of this island? If you look towards the right side of the island, you can see there's a very wide area between two lines. That means that there's a very... Uh, I guess, slow change in elevation on the eastern edge of this island. Uh, it says, which hike, A to B, C to D, or E to F, has the greatest change of elevation? And so you can see the different dots that are labeled here, A to B, uh, C to D, or E to F. The way that you'd figure this out is figure out where you're starting in elevation and where you're ending in elevation. So A, you started at the sea, uh, at the ocean, Pacific Ocean. Uh, which is zero feet C. You're also at sea level, zero feet. Uh, you travel up to B, uh, 5,000 feet. Uh, it's almost on this line for 5,000. Uh, you can see that uh, Mount Ikea uh, that you see at level D here, uh, letter D, uh, again, is about 11,000 feet, 10,000 feet. 
Uh, and so the change in elevation is 10 or 11,000 feet. Uh, letter E to F, E begins, if you follow the lines up to where they're labeled, about 4,000 feet and ends up at about 13,000 feet. So our change in elevation is 9,000. So which hike would be the most difficult? Uh, the greatest change in elevation, uh, that would be from sea level up to the top of Mauna Kea. Uh, that is the end of this video explaining how to interpret information from topographic maps. If you have any questions, you're welcome to stop in during homework hours or period 1A. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.